I'm Ann Shaw. I'm an architectural historian, archeologist, and Hoosier. I love exploring Indiana's history and lesser known sites and stories. Join me as we explore old houses, museums, historic sites, and archeology span throughout the state. This is Anarchy. Hi, we're at the Bonnet Thompson Center today in Irvington on the east side of Indianapolis. I'm here with Paul Diebold, who is a board member of the Bonnet Thompson Center. Paul, can you tell us a little bit of the history of the Bonnet Thompson? So this building was completed in 1903 and its intended use was to serve as Butler University's library because Butler University from 1875 until 1928 was here uh, in the Irvington community. And this was not the first location for Butler University and obviously not the last either. Um, so what years were they here? They were here from 1875 until 1928. Uh, before that, um, they started in the mid-1850s, and they were in the Old North Side. In fact, uh, that is why College Avenue was called College Avenue. It ran from downtown to the college, um, which was at more or less uh, 13th and College Avenue, uh, where uh, William Tinsley Architect had designed them a, a multi-purpose building uh, that actually continued to stand uh, after they moved here to Irvington. So by that time, that neighborhood was growing. Uh, there was no room for them to expand. Uh, they held a competition uh, for various communities to offer funds and or land, and Irvington won that competition. And uh, they moved here and stayed until 1928. Okay. So who was Bonna Thompson? Uh, she was an alum of Butler University. Her family had moved here to Irvington from Edinburgh, Indiana. They were wealthy bankers and, and uh, cattle ranchers in Edinburgh, and uh, they had done quite well for themselves, and they wanted to send their daughter to college, and such as was the custom at that time, they chose to actually move here to Irvington. They bought a house just across the street here, and uh, she went to college as a gift. Um, many a, a well-to-do um, young lady was given the grand tour of Europe, and this would complete and finish your, your education. You would see all the beautiful classical cities, Rome, uh, Athens, and so forth, and, and see the very places uh, where the things that took place that you had read about in college. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, during, unfortunately, during that trip, both her and her mother con contracted typhoid. They became ill, they made it back to the United States, they made it to the family home, um, but unfortunately, Bonna passed away. And so, as a memorial to her, uh, they donated the funds to build this library. And I think at that time, the usual thing would be uh, make a, a piece of sculpture or some kind of a physical memorial like you would see in a cemetery, mm -hmm. perhaps. And they, they opted instead to build a library. Butler had a great need for a library at that time because the books were all housed in one of the multi-purpose buildings. And if, for example, at one point the, the books were, the book collection was in the science building where the young students play with dangerous chemicals. So probably not a good mix. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have the books here in a, what they called a fireproof building fireproof because it was all masonry, including the reinforced concrete floors. Okay, and can you talk a little bit about the style of architecture of the building? It's one of the really interesting things about this building is um, at the turn of the century, all the major cities in the United States were very enamored of neoclassicism. Um, the uh, Columbian World's Exposition in Chicago uh, started this style when that was the the style for the campus for that fair, mm -hmm. and it created a sensation. People wanted uh, that kind of, of sparkling image for their own communities. So in Indianapolis, really, this is really one of the very earliest buildings. You think of that fair, 1893, this building completed in 1903. Mm -hmm. One of the very earliest buildings to embody that, that bold form of American classicism. So uh, people could very much point to this building with pride as it being a, a very, what they would call modern building. Not the way we would use modern today, uh, but they considered it to be modern in the sense that it was 
it was up to date with the architectural trend of classicism. And that's very evident when you see the, the exterior. The columns flanking the doorway are monolithic Indiana limestone, a full story and a half tall. Uh, and, and the building in all its detail is, is very thoroughly classical. That's carried through to the interior where we are now with the arched windows, mosaic tile floor, and barrel vault um, as you come in. So the, the building very much announces itself to you on both the exterior and when you come into the interior, you're rewarded with this incredible grand classical space. Now, Irvington is unique, I think, as a neighborhood in Indianapolis. It's got very curvilinear streets, it's well planned out, but this was all here before that, right? Now, actually, the, the, two, the, the two, uh grew together Okay. Uh, at the same time. The plat was filed in 1870 um, to, to uh, institute the, uh, the community with winding streets and uh, the competition in 1875 came before really very many houses were built. So the two kind of grew, grew together, uh, town and gown, as people like to say. Okay, very good. So what kind of activities happen here at the Bonnet Thompson Center? So um, the uh, Irvington Historical Society has their headquarters here and our mission is to preserve the art, history, and culture of Irvington and the greater Indianapolis area. So to that end, uh, one of the things that was very important in Irvington's cultural history uh, was the art colony that was here. So we actually have a permanent collection. Um, if you're familiar with T.C. Steele, mm -hmm. Hoosier School Art, mm -hmm. uh, you have um, basically all of T.C. Steele, uh, many of his friends rather, lived here. Uh, Clifton Wheeler, William Forsyth, Helene Hibben, Dorothy Moreland. Um, and they exhibited as a group for about 12 years here in the community. And uh, not myself really, but past board members were, were uh, uh, very far-sighted in collecting this art when it was affordable. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have a collection that probably many a small community uh, would, would like to have as their permanent museum collection here, um, here in the building. So we display that art. Uh, we also wanted to keep up the idea of Irvington as an art community, so we encourage new artists to display here. And right now, Rita Spaulding, for example, is in one of our galleries. She is a contemporary uh, Irvington artist that practices here in the community. So we try to serve kind of as a patron of the arts in that, in that way and uh, keep that tradition alive. We also do historical displays. We have an archive. Uh, we have a lot of, for example, abstracts of title for property in the community with which people can do research. They can come in and view those documents. And uh, we have a, a number of books that were published by Irvington authors mm -hmm. and so forth. So we're, we're kind of a research center uh, as well as a, com a community cultural center. Uh, people have weddings here. People uh, have other gatherings here, of course, it's appropriate to do that and uh, between all those activities we keep a pretty busy calendar. I know when I lived here in Irvington and I was wanting to do research on my house this is where I came to talk to the people that knew more than I did. Yeah we do have a, um, the Marion County historian is our executive director Steve Barnett mm -hmm. and Steve has uh, researched very well uh, really almost almost all the standing structures um, here in, in Irvington and we actually have a sort of a directory compiled of them that, that really serves as a nice shortcut mm -hmm. when you're wanting to do research. That's an amazing resource to have. Lots of communities and neighborhoods don't have yeah. that. So. It's been compiled over a very long period of time. We're trying to figure out some way of offering that uh, in a digital uh, fashion but it's, it's, it's a pretty daunting, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> pretty daunting thing to try to do. Now if somebody wanted to come visit the Bonnet Thompson how, what days are you open and hours? We're, we're open um, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays in the afternoon. And probably best to uh, consult our Facebook page uh, or our uh, web page and make sure because as the situation is in flux here, we are adjusting those hours. Okay, very good. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you to Paul and to the Irvington Historical Society for hosting us. Stay tuned for more episodes to come.